Hello and welcome to today's NBA betting picks video presented by lineups.com. I am your host, Andrew Norton. We are back. Braxton, we're back in action after missing yesterday. Today, the Grizzlies play. They're going to lose again. There's chaos going on with the Thunder. Is there any help for our teams? Well, I wouldn't compare them right now because you have the Thunder who are flying high and you have the Grizzlies who are just in the pits of the NBA with the Pistons, with the Wizards, with the Hornets. So, you know, I don't even want those two teams mentioned in the same sentence because the curse will rub off. Yeah, I mean, that that's probably a good point. But OKC's uh, in some issues for other reasons that we're not going to get into. But uh, they're problematic, to say the least. And we're hoping that they're false. But, you know, we'll see. Um, Braxton, what do you got for your first pick of the day? Well, I mean, I just bashed the Grizzlies, but I'm taking Desmond Bain over 2.5 threes. It's juiced, but I think it's a good spot for him. Hitting 11 of 16 games, taking nine attempts per game, roughly 36%, but you know, it's a little bit shorter than what he usually does, but his shot quality is just much lower, which is why it's plummeted a little bit, but you know, 36% is still really respectable given his degree of difficulty. So based on the matchup, you know, the jazz are one of the worst three point defenses in the NBA. They are 30th defending catch and shoot threes, 29th defending off the dribble threes in terms of opponent shot quality. So basically any guard that can do both has been killing them from deep. And that definitely defines Bain. He is one of the best all-around three-point shooters in the NBA in terms of, you know, how, how versatile his shot is, where it comes from, how it's created. So I really like him here because he can create it in a variety of ways. And Utah's pretty much exploitable in every sense on the three-point line. Bad defense, fast pace. It's just a good combination for three-point shooters. And where else is the offense coming from? From Memphis, as you know, where else from Bain? It's just, it's really scary right now. I think Bain knows he has to shoot, even if he's off, even if he's three for 12, he's going to keep shooting. Three for 15, he has to shoot because there's just no one else here. So, one, one minus 165, definitely juiced, but I think it's worth it. I agree. I mean, Bain is really the only option right now. Jaron has virtually no self-creation ability. I mean, his self-creation is is basically backing guys up in the post, turning over his right shoulder and shooting a baby left-handed hook. We're trying to do like a, you know, Giannis jab cross and from the three-point line and get fouled, slow step, get blocked, something along those lines. It's been it's been really atrocious as far as spacing, which, you know, some of that obviously isn't Jaron's fault, but um, the spacing's been awful. As far as our offensive weapons, we have virtually none. Um, you know, when we play Jacob Gilliard, this is, you know, a guy who's kind of relegated to the three-point line because there's just simply no way he's going to be able to shoot over any interior players whatsoever. Um, you know, Zaire Williams, uber inconsistent so far this year, shooting David Roddy, not shooting a three well at all the Grizzlies really are going to just have to basically jump on Desmond Bain's back in any game like this and just hope and pray that he can take him to the promised land. So I like that bet a lot. And if I wasn't going with the one I'm going with now, I would, I'm sure I would have backed that one because there's been a multitude of times where I've been over on Bain threes, but my pick today is going to be Jordan Clarkson over 19 and a half points. This one really didn't take long for me to find at all and to justify. Frankly, when I was going on the sports books, I was expecting about 22 and a half, 23 and a half. Without Laurie Markinen, there's about 18 field goal attempts, roughly, that are going to be distributed here to players. And my educated guess is that Jordan Clarkson is going to see the vast majority of those. I mean, Keontae George has shown that he can play make a little bit, he can score, he can shoot, but 
his inefficiency is not something that you want to continue to, I mean, he's already shooting only 35.8% from the field. When guys are doing that, you're not saying, oh, hey, here's more shots. Um, they're not going to run a whole bunch of sets for him. Obviously, they want him to grow. They want him to continue improving and getting better. But that's got to happen within the offense. And, you know, they're still going to be competitive. They're not full-blown tank mode yet. So I don't expect Georgia to take a whole bunch more shots. Kessler, not a shot creator at all. His most field goal attempts in a game, actually, in his career so far is 16 and he's only had more than 10 field goal attempts in a game and 12 other occasions this season he's only averaging seven field goal attempts per game they're not going to come with kessler they're not going to come with taylor horton tucker they're not going to come with john collins or kelly olenic these guys are going to shoot within the offense they're not going to go out and, and feel like they're forced to be 1a 1b anything like that so Clarkson averaged just shy of 24 points a game last season without marking it in the lineup. He hit that in five of the six games. The one game he fell short, he had 18 points, so he's two points short of this line, and he had 12 assists. For a player that is generally on chuck mode, logging 12 assists is insane, especially when you still almost get to this line. I do not see that happening in this game, and if it does happen, it's going to be because his usage is higher than Joel and beads last year. Um, you know, and obviously then there's the matter of this Grizzlies defense, which I haven't even got into yet without marking it in the lineup. I mean, it, it's not going to make a difference. I mean, they rank 19th in defensive rating. Okay. A lot of that is because of pace that has very little, in my opinion, to do with, you know, their actual efficiency on that side of the floor. They're allowing the highest three-point percentage in the league, just shy of 41% to opponents. And Clarkson's averaged 23 points and cleared this line in each of his first two games against the Grizzlies, too. So this is nothing but a good sign. Each of those games, obviously, he had Markkanen. Now he doesn't. I don't think that's necessarily – I don't think Clarkson's the kind of player that we can sit here and be like, well, is it possible that he could do worse without Markkanen in the lineup? Because – He's somebody who is so offensive centric. He is a creator. He is a tough shot maker. Taking attention off of somebody else is not necessarily going to make or break Clarkson. The more field goal attempts he has, the more he scores. He's a volume scorer. He's a microwave scorer. This Grizzlies defense has been Swiss cheese. Yeah, that was actually going to be my second pick, but I didn't want to do two in one game. So fully on board. With Clarkson, I might play it alternate to 25 too, because oh, I just him. think it's just a great spot for him, like you mentioned. Yeah. So I'm going with Embiid over 38 and a half points and assists. So, you know, he's playing the Pelicans and Jonas Valanciunas has what I like to call T-Rex arms. It doesn't mean it's a negative wingspan. It just means that they're just there's no contesting at all. There's just, he's just arms at the side. And his arms are not bothering anyone on shots. Embiid's just going to kill him in the paint. He's a t really bad um, rim protector. And Embiid is probably at his peak form right now in terms of scoring. You have um, a Pelicans team that ranks 29th in open plus wide open attempt, three point attempts per game um, because, you know, they have to collapse. There's just no other option when Valanciunas is left on an island inside. It's over. So they allow that. And then Embiid is really, really seeing shooters. His court vision is improved. He's finding open guys. And, you know, credit to Daryl Morey because he surrounded him with three point shooters for the first time in probably a while, like all four of very good shooters. So it's really allowing him to take advantage. He's kicking it out. And you have Maxi really converting too. He's helping him matters because. And B just dumps it to him and he's right there to just create. And, you know, these, these stat keepers are a little generous at times with how assists are graded. So it definitely benefits Embiid for that in that sense. So overall, I just think the matchup's great. And he's hit this in six of his last eight games. He's on a roll. His free throw count will be immense against Valanciunas. So he's every factor going for him here. 
The only thing that would hurt him is a blowout, but Pelican's offense is actually pretty good. They have CJ coming back, hopefully. So it's going to compete, and I don't really see a blowout happening this game. Yeah, I don't see a blowout either. I, this Pelicans team is competitive, especially when you put C.J. McCollum back in the mix, even if it's in limited minutes. Um, they have plenty of offensive options. I, I like the Pelicans a lot as you know, a team, as you know. I've, I've kind of been on their bandwagon the past couple of years thinking, you know, just stay healthy, just stay healthy. But, you know, God help teams in the Western Conference when McCollum's fully healthy and Trey Murphy's fully healthy and Jordan Hawkins is playing like this and Zion's returning to form and Ingram is just Ingram in general. But, yeah, I don't see this being a blowout. It shouldn't be. Um, Embiid is going to have a a feast in the paint against Valanciunas. And then, you know, any time that they double, Embiid has shown – much improved playmaking, passing, and just competence as a passer, which before, what, it's not that it wasn't there. It's just that it's so much improved now that, you know, you can pretty much count on him to get you six assists. And it wouldn't shock me all that much if he was flirting with this line at the end of the half, halfway through the third quarter because he is really just going to kill these guys. Um, so like that pick a lot. Those are going to be our three picks for the day. Um, if you like the video, go ahead and hit like, throw a comment down there, tell us why we're right or why we're wrong, anything like that. Hit the subscribe button. We'll be back um, tomorrow with some more betting picks, and we will see you then.